Hello, uh, Kachung. Hello, Valerio. I'm sure that uh, it's going to be a good discussion. Although we don't need uh, to be together, it's in the digital container that we are talking. And I'm not sure if the digital container is a good way to discuss uh, the changes in the world, uh, the positive and the negative, the, the luxury and the, and the capitalism and, and all the world that is shaking up. So I thought you were a good match. But first, um, maybe Valerio, talk a bit about yourself and uh, what is your, uh, what are you up to date in this new situation uh, where the world was pushing on us into? Okay. First of all, thank you, Linda, for inviting me uh, and representing Nero in this uh, discussion. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, uh, Okay, it's obviously this is a very peculiar and special moment uh, in, uh, in, from any perspective we can watch it. Uh, but um, I, I would say that somehow I, uh, myself and Nero as a publishing uh, company, but actually uh, a very specific publishing company which always used the uh, very different formats uh, and like worked a lot on intermediation um, and on like uh, quite radical and sometimes uh, addressed as, as these topics, uh, these topic uh, uh, issues or topics. Uh, I have to say that somehow we were, uh, I, I, I would not say that we were expecting this, of course, because we couldn't expect such a scenario, but we were pointing it maybe somehow already in the past. Uh, we, our li last books uh, have, have like very uh, eloquent titles, I would say, uh, such as uh, In the Dust of This Planet by Eugene Tucker, which is like a very, a sort of uh, uh, horror take on philosophy or um, Donna Haraway Staying with the Trouble, which was particularly addressing the coexist coexistence with like uh, germs and viruses or I don't know, uh, New Dark Age by James Bride or they are all, I don't know, they describe somehow um, an approach that uh, might look pessimistic, but instead was, uh, is for us and is in the, in the work of all these authors which we work with. Uh, um, a quite energetic take on our present. It's just like uh, a sort of a call and a, a radical approach to, to reality. Uh, just because I think that reinventing ourselves in this moment is a pretty difficult task. Uh, it's true that we, some of us have had more time to reflect and to, to think about ourselves and our jobs, but it's also a time in which all of us have been absorbed by like, strong and uh, dif huge difficulties, both professionally and existentially. And like, I don't know, this, uh, uh, we are all exposed to like uh, the risk of, uh, of uh, some sort of depression or as uh, another uh, prominent philosopher that uh, also happened to be our author says a sort of psycho deflation, uh, the, the condition in which basically there is an inherent and uh, inevitable somehow uh, uh, challenge to take a position because what uh, what is happening now for, for us uh, now in my opinion is precisely that we have uh, taking again the ideas of before uh, uh, two different scenarios that uh, is uh, in front of us one is basically the end of the world as we know and which you can i don't know you can uh, substitute the, the 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 expression the world as we know with uh, neoliberalism or neocapitalism or whatever you you think uh, our world is uh, based on uh, and the other option uh, even if it's on drastic is uh, somehow the end of us as human beings basically the extinction so again it, i don't want to like emphasize the pessimistic aspect of this but i would like to take the challenge of uh, having to take a position uh, in this moment. So it's good to change, but changes are not forever. And we have always to take a position in relation with change and reinvention. Thank you for the beautiful introduction. It's very interesting. Kachung, you took a position. You changed your job. 
you quit no matter how. Yes. That was yes. the position you took. <clears throat> Explain. Yes. Uh, um, I've been thinking like for these two or three years. I'm I'm in China. I I pay, I moved to Shanghai for like um, 13, 14 years, and I'm working for media around like 20 years in Hong Kong and in China. So I've been doing a lot of different things related to magazine. I work, I start with newspaper and then monthly and then weekly and then monthly. So I've been doing a lot of like in terms of the book vacation with different frequency. So they have different needs. Uh, but at the same time, it's like now what when we were talking about the titles I'm working on is kind of like commercial title. So we rely on more our advertiser rather than the readers. And so that's why like it's not it's not only you thinking about do you care about the readers, but your competitor will think in that way. So like the media group or like the media company in China, I would say they they were starting more working like an um, advertising company. And so let me think about it's like I don't mind to work things related to commercial, but I don't want to work only for commercial because if I work only for commercial, I, I'm not like a media. I'm I'm actually like a production house or a studio. So that's why I've been thinking a lot on this issue. So if I still want to be a media person, so what can I do? Or like, what is a magazine? Or like, what is media right now? So I can't say like, um, I was trying to define it worldwide, but in in China with all like digital co like digital platform and stuff, and also like printed publication, I've been working for 20 years. So I see there is a, a transformations of the form of content in China or in Asia. So that's why I make a decision. So, okay, maybe it's about time to do the other things. First of all, I really like fashion. So that's why I focus on fashion and I work for magazine because I work for uh, because I like fashion, so I'm always working related to fashion, and that 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 is something I sort it out. So, why not? Is that possible to work in fashion, but is still using my skill of like a like a journalist or like a fashion editor? So that's why I was thinking into a different way. So, what if I can deal with like different platform? or I can work in a brand and then I still working with my ex competitor, which they are the media person or like different magazine. And then I can actually work with them to create like a content, which I can sort of leading them to, to do a certain phase things, which I want it to be. So it's like, I run a magazine on myself and then I work with my editor and then I try to do something different. So now, is that possible? I work in the brand and then I use my way of working with my editor, but I, instead I work with different magazine or different platform because now you have like digital media, you have like printed media, you have like uh, TikTok, you know, yeah. So I can actually, if I'm working for brand, maybe I can deliver the content I like into different platform. So that was one of the thing I was trying to shift my role. And it can be quite experimental, but at the same time, I think that this is one of the reasons I, I want to try. Yeah, because I, I actually, at the end, what we want to do is to deliver content to the readers. And some in somehow I still believe in creative. So this is one of the things we were trying to deliver our ideas for different media, different platform, even brands. It can be somehow it's like we are trying to use it as a tools to to create content on on top of it. So this is one of the, the, the thing I was trying to test or experiment where with that's what right now. Yeah. So I think our task, your task is to make this uh this industry 
uh, more understandable and uh, more ethically uh, uh, understandable. Because if we look at it from, a, from outside, it's a terrible industry. If we go deeper into it, we can find the values of this kind of uh, uh, way of working. And so I think we have to combine now the old world and the, and the new world, the neighborhood and the city. Valerio, how do you feel this? Uh, how do you feel about this situation that we have to go probably listening to other people than we did before? Well, uh... I can talk maybe about uh, my perception, of course. So if in relation with the fashion world, the fashion industry, I totally understand and agree with what you just said. That, for example, it's not so easy and it's not so readable, this thing from the outside. And there's always, I always felt uh, as like, a, let's say an outsider, even though I have many connections with the fashion world, an outsider, I always have the feeling that uh, there's not a, a, a real transparency between like the people who like act, I actually really appreciate and they work within the system and the fact that, and the general narration of fashion, let's say what like transparent. So this is just like a perception and I cannot say more, but uh, in comparison, like between the old world and the new world, and uh, if we talk about something that can go under the, maybe the, the name of, let's say institutions, Okay, I have the feeling uh, that uh, that the situation is pretty tricky, and uh, in again, in like uh, even if uh, uh, there is a I don't know the, the need to me to like uh, parasite and change the institution and see what institutions, like in a broader sense, uh, can resist uh, to our new present. Let's say, and we uh, we need to. To keep them going we need to keep them uh, we need to change uh, and if they resist uh, we need to like uh, continue to use them uh, to like as mark fisher uh, used to say to like convert uh, affection into action so the in that sense i totally agree but i also think that we really need to invent new institutions which the, which i don't know exactly what does it mean but we need to like uh, I think that there are like some huge old holes in our uh, collective system uh, that uh, we are not yet able to see, but we are experiencing them. We are like feeling them. We feel like we, I think that now for the first time, I think people uh, and me, like people that are around me are feeling uh, the, some sort of absence okay from in the in the world so that's a good point for me to start with like the feeling of an absence uh, can like uh, trigger uh, i don't know an action again uh, can transform an affection a sentiment a feeling into an organized action so i think uh, i mean i know it's pretty vague and like abstract as a discourse but this is what i feel in a, on a general level Cartoon, can you see how you react to, to this uh, discussion point? I think, I think it, I, I've been talking to some of the Chinese designer about like the situations right now. And then um, uh, by the results of the last season, I think they are doing much better than before. And much better, which means like the, like the, um, the ideas or the concept is much more complete. And then I, I talked to them and then they said, oh, because they have more time, which like they isolate themselves at the work, like the studio. And because like fashion used to be like, oh, you always connected with people and going out. So you don't spend as much as time to think by yourself. And then, so I think actually this is quite interesting where they will concentrate to have actually have a conversation with themselves because sometimes they put too much attention to having like uh, inspiration or ideas or a trend or whatever, but they were not doing something they want to do. So I think this is actually a quite special period 
and then they were focusing and they, they asked themselves this question and then they tried to focus more about what they want to do and what it should be like um, from from their heart I would say so that's why they spend more time on this and then so they can deliver something much more complete as you know like fashion industry right now is like too fast like all the designer was telling you we don't have enough time we are doing too many collections too many pieces and then but now there's a stop so then when you stop you think about do i need to do so many things do i have to listen to all these people they were asking to have like oh one more collection two more collection three more pieces like yeah so that's why they can actually do something much more complete so that that that, that was my feeling yeah i think it's um it's a quite interesting period of time to let you to rethink about uh, what is important to you in terms of like time or family or people and space so it's like um, a period to rethink your connection with the world yeah or priority can, can, yeah can i ask uh, precisely on this point uh, question can i yes yes yeah. Bye. yeah okay no i just uh, because i'm really curious uh, because uh, it happened quite the same for me talking with artists and writers in the last period, uh, which uh, exactly, it's exactly the same scenario, even though I know that fashion world is much faster and much more demanding than uh, probably the art world, but the dynamic is very similar. I just want to ask you if you also, like maybe on the opposite side, if you also have encountered like some sort of, uh, let's use this word, like depression uh, in, in their feelings. Because that's what I also encountered a lot. In the, you mean depression? depression? Depression, like I mean, like depression, like uh, I don't know. I, it's like the opposite consequence of uh, having less things to do and like more time. Uh, to some, so, yeah, there, 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 there are some people who are questioning themselves on doing the, the, this, like or doing it all the time, the same thing. Yeah, of course. There are some, but um, but I think I think in China is a little bit different from from mm. from the outside because um, the situation here is is actually we cover much faster. Mm -hmm. So that's why people when they were seeing a lot of news about the world, how, see, seeing like the um, the situation is is not getting back, they actually feel more positive about the situations here because like we were doing like our fair we're doing fashion week much faster than the world so okay. i can i can see like they they were actually feeling much more positive but it doesn't mean that they don't worry about the situation because yeah. a lot of people are still worrying about like so so what can we do or like so how what what if like we can travel again so it's like in seeing the world the world is so different right now or so there is a lot of like um like different way of discussion or thinking about it but i would say less less because like okay. now it's it's a very weird period especially when we are causing country we have this quantity time so it's like a two two weeks you have to stay in a hotel or or at your home or like right. it, it really depends on the situation and that was kind of like a quite interesting uh, way a new way of lifestyle if you have to like i'm from hong kong so if i'm going back to hong kong i have to consider if i want to see my parent first of all i need to go back and then i have for like two weeks to isolate it in the hotel and then finally i can meet my family and then when i come back to shanghai i have to be isolated again mm -hmm. so this is like a complete new way of thinking about like how you manage your time your life and what is really important if you if that is very important you will go for it if not then you probably is like it, it doesn't work like this yeah mm -hmm. so so a lot of like perception of life is changing i think and I, I think it, it would be like very long term. It doesn't mean that it's like we have the vaccine, it would change as much. I mean, like some part of our, our mind is already changed in some way. The way of thinking has been a little bit adjusted. Yeah. 
Because like before, I think like with all the globalization and capitalization and, and pushing everything so fast, and everything is becoming like like a product, and like mm-hmm. even like we treat ourselves like a product or like a machine, right? And now it's like yeah, I think I think European is 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 actually better. They don't think in that way, but like in consider the environment of Asian. Asian people, no matter like they were Chinese or Hong Kongese or Japanese, they work really hard. Like they think they they want to be a machine in that way. They work to work like starting at the beginning of the like at uh, the morning, and then we we were staying at the office until midnight, and then we come back again in the early in the morning, and that was actually like you 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 feel like pride on this, but. After this situation, I mean, like a lot of things, a lot of people, especially young generations, they they were thinking about like why, well, like, what the hell, yeah. So it's a it's a shiftment of value. I think I think this value is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Values are the most important thing in life, and I think also the we have to redefine what we really want and so i think writing is something that is important for the moment i don't i think i sometimes i'm the best in doing things when i feel a certain anger or a certain disillusion or a certain um despair writers have to write critics have to be critical more critical activists have to be more activist and 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 things have to happen now what do you mean? What do you think about that, Valerio? Yes, uh, about being critical, about being, um, as I said before, uh, which might can might be like misinterpreted, radical, and it's not like integrally. It's just like a bit more uh, goes to the roots of some like issues and topics. I think it's pretty necessary, and it's our approach. I mean, also in our work with Nero, we, we for example, we don't embrace even if we actually make books and we sell books and we present books and we do magazines and we do we never never uh, embrace the like the narration for example of just saying like uh, reading is beautiful just do it uh, that's not the point uh, sometimes you should also uh, publish books that are uh, honestly not really nice to be read they they just need you, you need to read them it can be also tough it can be sometimes uh, shocking uh, it can be sometimes uh, difficult uh, and uh, like uh, not easy to accept but at the same time as you just well, just said uh, it can give you a lot of energy at least uh, I, this is what is happening in my opinion uh, for example for our leadership uh, we we started a new book series recently a couple of years ago three years ago actually um and the response in the in, in italy uh was really astonishing like uh we have now like uh, a whole new generation of people uh particularly between the 20s in their 20s which are like to me astonishingly uh hungry of like uh they are not any more like I, I think they are not anymore available of just being like told, uh, uh, sorry for the expression, but like bullshit. They really, really want to to like things to be addressed properly, even if they are uncomfortable with those uh, things. So I, I totally agree with you. I, I think it's very important now to be critical, which is not being against. It's just like being very, uh, rese- like v- very, very, um, how do you say, um, careful in always see what's your position. So again, I go back to the starting point. So yeah. I agree. So yeah, I agree. Um, Cartoon, are you going to be radical in, in also your new job? I think like, I'm not like a very radical person. <laughs> um, I would do I I would do things like quite slow, but like yeah, I I I think what is important is like we can be critical, but we are not judgmental. Most of the time, like people having opinion right now, they just they just give it like they just want to challenge something. I think sometimes like 
it, it really depends on the understanding. And at the same time, it's like when I was trying to, I'm quite straightforward. So when I say my opinion, I just want to say it, like to, to, to tell something I, I think. It's more pure. I'm not trying to convince you on that, like, it's just my point of view. And I'm not trying to uh, to challenge something. I w normally, when I say something, I would think, um, is that the best way which the other can understand what I'm telling? So it's like, if I'm going to make a statement, and at the same time, I have to make, make sure, like, um, who, like, like you guys will, will understand what I, I, I was thinking about. So I was trying to use like a tone or manner or my language to, to make it easier to understand. So I'm not, not that type of like very radical. And at the same time, it's like, I think actually more dangerous, the situations right now is like we not normally we can have like a real conversation because most of the time when you were trying to say something like people will think they were being offense or like they will think you are challenging them, but like you just simply ask the question. I, I have to say, because I talked to a lot of like my ex Hong Kongese friends and then they were like always think that, oh, you are challenging us or whatever, you don't understand or, yes, I ask questions, it's because I don't understand. And that's why I ask questions. I'm not like trying to challenge you, okay? It's like, it's because I don't understand the situation, so that's why I ask. And it's very simple and that's like human. And that's why we have to make a conversation. And so that was the thing. And that, but this happens a lot on internet because like you, we, we are not always having like a real conversation over the internet. Like people always have like a perceptions of the others or they, they were rather not saying what they were thinking, which is not, not pure or they would rather like, oh, okay, I saw a question and then I try to go to Google and then I, I try to search what is the best answer and, and then I a answer it or I put it in the comment. So most of the people, they were, they, they were actually giving up their opinion. They were trying to say the opinion which have the most light. I think it, it changed the mindset within these couple of years with the internet. So sometimes I, I, yeah, what, what I think is more inspiring is like we actually should talk to more people to inspire the people to have like a normal, more normal conversation, which you, we can inspire each other. It's like not, I'm just trying to inspire you, but I want you to inspire me. So that was simple. It's actually the, the most simple, simplest things of the world of, of the conversation. And that's what I, that's what we need right now, I think. Yeah. I agree. And is, is the digital flattening the conversation and is the print more um, defining the ideas, black and white, it's printed, it has more value? Uh, no? I, yeah, catching va bene. It's up to you. Uh, I I actually I, I'm reading a book recently. It's called Well Without Mind, and it's it's talk a lot about like how internet was like those internet company were changing media, and at the same time, like how they they change our way of thinking because. Um, with all the internet company, we, we, we put everything related to the, the comment or the clicks or the advertisers and stuff. And then, so when we used to have like a media or a magazine or even newspaper, we have different sections. So even sex, different section is actually supporting each other. It's like, if I, I like to read sports, I will buy the newspaper for the sports column, but at the same time, the whole mag the whole newspaper, they have different columns. So you have finance, you have news, you have like the other columns or like even for the writers and stuff. So they will wrap it together. But now when you are uh, on the internet, everything is pieces by pieces. So if, if you like, like the, like to read the news of sports, so you only buy the news of sports. So everything is so concentrated on stuff. But at the same time, we are actually killing the other 
things, which is maybe they were not that entertaining, maybe they were not that interesting, but they worth to be exist. Like something related to like culture, or like art critic, or like music critic, or they of course they were not as fun as this gossip magazine, but they are needed. Because they they were telling us like something we 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 cannot think by ourselves. But the situations of of right now, especially on media, is like because everything is online and then everything is related to like one single article instead of like the whole magazine. I think it changed a lot on like a, yeah we we are not like the writer is not that diversified right now. If they want to like. To earn the living by just writing is very difficult. If I'm not like writing something, trying to make people happy, you know, yeah. So I think it's quite yeah. It's it's not very positive. Valerio, I see you thinking a lot. I see your brain、mm. is thinking. Yeah. <laughs> What to react? <laughs> like just an impression. <laughs> yeah, no, But, then... no. I I agree with what、uh, Kakun just said because、uh, <clears throat> I think it's a positive. It, it can be a positive shift,、uh, even if it's like really tricky as everything in this, in this moment. Personally, I have the feeling that these、uh, what we are facing are not personal. It's quite evident and quite、uh, uh, anyway a shared idea that、uh, we are going、uh, through a. Atomization, a fragmentation, an explosion of language and communication. That that's quite obvious, and it's also obvious in the sense that、uh, all the、um, we are talking about social platforms and so on. So like、uh, those are are like examples of how we can what we can create now are platforms, not really magazines. Let's say you know in, in this period, at least this is what is happening. So starting from this, I would say that since we are a publishing company, we do like books, a lot of paper books.、Uh, we, we used to for 16 years. We have done like、uh, a proper paper magazine, like, and now we shifted to the digital. But in general,、uh, to me,、uh, it's interesting the fact that、uh, against the common idea that we are、uh, reading less,、uh, there are like a lot of studies which like points out to precisely the opposite. <laughs> Like、people are, technically speaking, reading much more than than before. I mean, there was a study of like about ten years ago that we were exposed basically on every day to one hundred thousand words per day, for example. So we basically like actually read read one one hundred thousand words per day, which can be like billboards, can be advertising, can be like I don't know indication in the. On the bus, or I don't know, in the TV, the the titles under the like the body of the speaker. So, whatever it is, so we have like a huge penetration of language, and we have actually a world that、uh, is basically made of language. If even if the narration is,、uh, we are going to a visual world. No, we have also to recognize that the visual itself is made of language. It's made of code. It's made of like、mm-hmm. another. Uh, another uh, matter, let's say, that we can like sometimes experience some wound, the wound in the you now when like a, no, a, a software crashes, or if we receive an attachment in an email that is a JPEG that becomes like an unreadable、uh, piece of like code. So what I mean is that the interrelation between language and our experience, knowledge, experience are completely shifting. The new writers are not just like what we thought are the writers. Now, we probably have to consider coders as writers right now because they are actually writing the reality much more than fiction writers are doing, for example. Yeah, at least in some cases. So I think that the the challenge, at least、uh, in my opinion, and with our work, is precisely to get into this、uh, stream, into this flow, to be relevant and meaningful, and find new ways of like putting the right words into this、uh, huge flow of language that we are continuously exposed to. I think we have to close with this important statement that. Language has to be reinvented. We have to be more careful 
about our use of language and um, we have to uh, be more critical, more radical. But we are positive and we have to react. So I thank you for this conversation. I'm sure we are going further on uh, with uh, finding the right language and the right balance between the digital and the, the analog, I guess. So thank you both for being here and taking your time for the conversation. Thank you, Valerio. Thank, thank you, Linda. Thank, thank you. you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Kachun. Let's you too. Let's let's talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, contact each other. Yeah. Continue the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connecting, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, connecting. No, totally. Yeah. Okay. Do so, that. No, there, there, there are be... lots of like new type of language. I think. Yeah. Yes. It's like we yeah. we we communicate with each other by like even visual language and music, art and fashion. I, I think it becoming a different type of language to to get yeah. people to know better, especially culturally. Yeah. So and if you connect guys, yeah, if you would connect yeah. guys, it would be the most beautiful present of this uh, oh, uh, good, event. Good. Okay. Of yeah. course. Let's do thank it. You, cool. course, thank you, Kershun. Thank you. And thank you, thank Linda. You. Thank you for coming, for thank having you, this precious time. Thank you for the conversation. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.